alam na puso sa dibdib ko'y buhay hindi hindi sumusuko sa hirap na dibdib ko'y buhay sa mga manluli sumusuko hindi pa sa hirap na dibdib ko'y buhay buhay na magigamanluli sumusuko
ka rin at nagwagi Mula sa kanuran ko sa nalubog ang araw Uhubog ng umagang sa silangan matatanaw Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Isang mapagpalayat pa kasi sayang 2021. 
I'm Jubilin Yerves po, history researcher from the National Historical Commission of the Philippines and a member of the National Quincentennial Secretariat. Welcome again to the Countdown to 500 Online Lecture Series, a program brought to you by the Office of the President of the Philippines and the National Quincentennial Committee or NQC in anticipation of the 2021 Quincentennial Commemorations in the Philippines. This is a series of online lectures which aims to sustain the Filipinos' interest to the 500th anniversary of the victory at Mactan, the Philippine part in the first circumnavigation of the world, and other related events in 2021 in this time of COVID-19 pandemic. Ngayon pa lang ay nagpapasalamat na kaming lubos sa lahat ng patuloy na sumusubaybay sa aming mga programa, gayon din sa mga katuwang na ahensya na kaagapin namin upang may sakutuparan ang programang ito. Narito ang National Historical Commission of the Philippines or NHCP, Presidential Communications Operations Office or PCOO, Radio Television Malacanang or RTVM, Department of Foreign Affairs or DFA, and DepEd or Department of Education. We are also live via Facebook pages of the National Quincentennial Committee, NHCP, PCOO, RTVM, NCCA, DFA, and DepEd. Please don't forget to share this live stream to your friends and like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash NQC2021. Follow at NQC2021 on Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel, National Quincentennial Committee for more educational resources. Follow also our playlist on Spotify, the 500 Years Philippines to access the official soundtrack of the Quincentennial Commemorations in the Philippines. Kasama ko rin po ngayon ang partner moderator ko na si Ms. Ayesha Saisek. Hello Ayesha! Magandang umaga, Jubes. Uh, salamat, maraming, uh, at magandang umaga po sa lahat po ng uh, attendees po natin ngayong araw. Muli ako po si Ayesha Saiseng, Historic Sites Development Officer 2 ng National Historical Commission of the Philippines at miyembro ng NQC Secretariat. Ilan lamang pong paalala, maaari niyo pong gamitin ang Queen Centennial Online Lecture Portal sa panonood ng lecture na ito. So mapapanood niyo po sa nasabing portal ang lahat ng lectures ng NQC at iba pang partner institutions. Maaari rin po kayong maka-generate ng e-certificate sa nasabing portal. Ang kailangan niyo lang pong gawin ay mag-sign up sa portal.nqc.gov.ph. Once again, portal.nqc.gov.ph at tumutok sa live stream ng lecture na ito sa nasabing portal. Ang ating pong lecture ngayon ay ikalabing wala na or 18 countdown to, to 500 online lecture na ng National Queen Centennial Committee. Balikan po natin yung mga lektura nitong 2021. So sa ikalibang, ikalabing lima po nating lektura noong January 22, Tinalakay ni Dr. Chas Navarro ang nuances ng mga Spanish archival documents at ibinahagi ang mga paraan kung paano mapapahusay ang pagbabasa at pagsasalin ng mga nilalaman ng dokumento upang magamit ng mas nakararaming Pilipino. Nito naman pong February 10, tinalakay ni Ms. Feliz Santamaria, Prudente Santamaria sa ikalabing anim na lektura ang mahalagang papel at koneksyon ng pagkain sa kasaysayan ng unang circumnavigation ng mundo at sa labanan sa Mactan. Binisisi naman po ni Dr. Danilo Herona sa kanyang ikalabing pitong lektura nitong February 24 ang katauhan ni Magellan gamit ang ilang available eyewitnesses description tungkol sa kanya. So ngayong araw po, muling babalikan ng ating panauhing takapagsalita ang mga naunang tala tungkol sa naging ugnayan ng ating mga ninuno at ng mga Espanyol sa Eastern Visayas 500 taon na, ikalabing, limang, labing, uh, uh, 500, ano bang 500? Um, limang daang taon na ang nakakaraan. Sasagutin ang matagal ng tanong ng scholar kung bakit hindi sinalakay ng mga Bisaya Expedisyong Magellan Elcano habang nasa isla ng Humonon. So kung sakali po na habang nagpe-present po ang ating speaker ay magkakaroon kayo ng mga katanungan, feel free po to ask questions through the comment section of this live stream. At sa mga nasa loob naman po ng ating Zoom, uh, mag-chat lamang po tayo sa Q&A portion ng ating Zoom. At we will accommodate po at the latter part of the lecture. So para ipakilala po ang ating tagapagsalita, muli na andito po ulit si Jukes para ipakilala. Okay, maraming salamat tayo siya. Uh, guys, our speaker for today is Assistant Professor in History at the Department of Anthropology, 
Sociology and History of the University of San Carlos in Cebu City. He is a lifetime member of the Philippine National Historical Society and is currently Secretary of the Executive Council of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, uh, National Committee on Historical Research, or NCCA and CHR. Everyone, let's welcome uh, Dr. George Borinaga. Hello, po, uh, Dr. Borinaga. Good morning, morning uh, Jubes. So thank you for the uh, introduction. So ang, uh, my talk today uh, pertains to uh, the early uh, contact between uh, people in what are now the Philippines and uh, the uh, Magellan expedition crew. So I, what I hope to do uh, is to provide uh, the indigenous perspective of this uh, initial encounter and uh, what the possible reasons were as to uh, how the natives acted towards the uh, newly arrived uh, expedition uh, members. So if uh, you recall from what was mentioned earlier, uh, that was the, I guess, the question of why uh, there was no battle or no uh, tensions between the two, unlike perhaps in the earlier episode of the Magellan uh, expedition in Guam, where uh, boats were stolen from the crew and um, the expedition had to retaliate against uh, the islanders. So I hope to uh, put context into uh, the different uh, encounter that the Magellan uh, expedition members faced in uh, what are now the Visayan Islands. So let me first uh, share my uh, slide. So... Uh, and first, share screen. So, uh, is this now visible? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Again, the title of my talk is uh, The War God of Homonhon and the uh, Arrival of uh, Magellan. So as suggested in the title, uh, there are two parts for this presentation. Uh, first, I deal with uh, the uh, context of the Visayan Islands uh, at the time the expedition arrived on uh, around March 16. And then uh, they landed in Homonhon in, on around March 17 and they met with uh, the people from uh, the island of Suluan on uh, March 18. So I uh, will then explain the um, uh, background behind the arrival of the Magellan expedition, what were the uh, contextual factors behind that, both from uh, the European perspective and then from uh, the indigenous perspective. So I'd also like... Uh, to uh, thank si Sir Derek Makutai for the very beautiful uh, artwork that went with the uh, poster. And uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Ian Alfonso for the initial invitation and to uh, Sir Rene Escalan Chair Rene Escalante of NHCP and Executive Director of um, NQC for uh, providing me with this opportunity to share my research. So I hope to deal with uh, the following questions. Uh, what was Homonhon's significance to the indigenous religion of Spanish contact communities? So ang terms were Haop, Camoro, Bungto, Lungsut, and others in uh, the Visayan Islands, or at least uh, some are later, which is the focus of uh, this presentation. And second is, uh, how did the Magellan Expedition's 1521 arrival in what is now the Philippines, and especially its initial stopover at Homonhon, contribute to the transformation of the Spanish contact religion and society of the uh, Visayas. So hopefully through answering these two questions, uh, it will also help uh, to answer that initial uh, question of why there was no uh, battle or clash in uh, Homonhon, unlike later in uh, 
Mactan where you had the Kadaugan sa Mactan, the victory at Mactan. So it was uh, two completely different uh, outcomes, but uh, there are uh, materials that we can look at that would help explain why this was the case. And um, again, the problem with such questions is that um, if we look at the regular uh, European sources, okay, there tends to be gaps. So a lot of uh, unstated nga mga, uh, cultural facts or details would tend to be omitted because uh, the uh, chroniclers, especially people like Pigafetta, uh, were unfamiliar with the culture or uh, they were just trying to absorb the uh, new cultures and societies they were uh, meeting for the first time. So there's bound to be silences and uh, given subsequent uh, chronicles, so there were missionaries who were quite uh, prolific in documenting the societies and cultures where the Magellan expedition passed through. So this can give us added context and uh, hopefully uh, help to explain some of the uh, events that transpired during that period when uh, the Magellan uh, ships passed through the area. So um, uh, ethnographic accounts will therefore be quite significant in explaining uh, these events. So I propose here that we look at uh, folkloric materials and uh, facts or cultural facts that we might uh, regard as, as strange or part of superstition, but are actually quite helpful in uh, explaining the indigenous worldview of how they would perceive the uh, Magellan expedition. So I list here some of the uh, observations I've uh, come up with in terms of uh, studies about the uh, Magellan expedition. So there tends to be uh, a lack of uh, focus on indigenous perspectives. So it's often uh, seen from uh, European perspectives or at least ang atong mga values that you, we put into the data are based on subsequent mga values. So for instance, in uh, the themes for the NQC celebration. So we use terms like victory and humanity or in uh, Filipino, tapang and uh, kapwa. But I suggest that uh, these words, these concepts are laden with uh, later ng mga values. So nanay, uh, there's already uh, a Christian overlay, for instance, when we say humanity. And uh, behind that, you have uh, values like thou shall not kill or uh, any of the uh, Christian uh, mga principles that were introduced to us uh, by uh, Magellan and subsequent uh, uh, mga missionaries. So we hope to uh, go back in time in terms of uh, the perspective of uh, how they would have seen the Magellan expedition uh, in their own terms. So what were these... Uh, ideas or values that they had in uh, when they met the crew and uh, Magellan. So I uh, want to focus on local concepts and local linguistic terms that would uh, give a probable uh, picture of uh, what exactly happened at that time. So in terms of approach, uh, there are a lot of uh, recent approaches that uh, seeks to integrate a lot of uh, disciplines. So things like deep history, which deals with prehistoric uh, themes, but also uh, incorporating mga recent scientific finds. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, recent uh, approaches like geomythology. So they uh, seek to explain uh, folklore or uh, local religions in terms of environmental phenomenon, for instance. So this is quite helpful in uh, giving us an idea of why you have a war god 
that was based in Homonhon as the title uh, of my talk implies. So again, ang other uh, focus is on the locality that we uh, not see it from the lens of Magellan or from the lens of uh, bigger areas perhaps like uh, Cebu, but in terms of uh, village uh, level uh, perspectives. And in this case, the perspective we want to get at is that of the people of Suluan who first met the uh, expedition. So I suggest that environmental phenomena, especially in uh, the Philippines, which is uh, quite uh, hazard prone, uh, would be a good way of understanding these events because uh, these uh, environmental phenomenon or phenomena tend to be left out in Philippine historiography. So we do not really consider them as uh, important in the shaping of our cultures. But as recent events have shown us, especially Typhoon Yolanda, which is uh, a critical uh, event in giving uh, light to what happened uh, 500 years ago uh, this year. And this approach has been uh, promoted by the likes of Greg Bankoff and others who have uh, highlighted the role of the environment in shaping Philippine societies and uh, cultures. So we now go to the first question. So who exactly was Makapatag? So in uh, this map, so I've synthesized a lot of the data I've uh, found, and these are uh, mainly derived from these four sources, the ones in the blue uh, uh, squares. So they are uh, early chronicles, including Luarca's uh, account uh, from his time in Panay. So there's also materials from uh, the Chirino Chronicles and also 20th century ethnographic studies, especially the study by uh, the Hart couple, Don Hart and Harriet Hart, on uh, the folklore or legend of Makaandog. Okay? Uh, I argue here that Makaandog and Makapatag might have been the same being, or they referenced the same uh, uh, diwata in the terminology of pre-colonial Filipinos. And uh, perhaps the uh, more comprehensive source is that of Father uh, Francisco Ignacio Alsina. So he was a Jesuit uh, missionary who spent around uh, 30 or more, 30 plus year, years in uh, Samar and Leyte as a uh, Jesuit missionary. So he was uh, quite uh, taken by the local culture. So he uh, documented even the minute the mga practices and beliefs of these uh, people just as uh, they were introducing new concepts, new values to uh, these local communities. So this is the other interesting thing about these sources. Uh, at the same time that they are documenting them, they, are, they were also being transformed. And we'll see later how that is uh, possible. So the key location is, again, ang, uh, Homonhon, because uh, this is where uh, Magellan encountered the first people in what are now uh, the Philippines. And uh, as perhaps is already known, it was quite a cordial uh, uh, meeting and uh, they were able to replenish their uh, depleted supplies. So after their failed attempt at uh, reprovisioning in Guam. And uh, interestingly, this was... Uh, now, a short episode, uh, but also quite meaningful in terms of uh, what we are now remembering. So the humanity aspect of uh, the quincentennial commemoration. So I hope here to provide a, a deeper uh, uh, contextualization to uh, that particular theme. So as uh, stated by Father Alsina, uh, in his chronicles, the island Homonhon had been uh, a sacred island. So that was why it was uninhabited. So when uh, the expedition arrived, uh, they first set anchor near Suluan, but 
uh, a day later kay they landed in uh, Humonhon to be more secure okay perhaps they were uh, still a bit worried about uh, possible conflicts with the uh, locals but the interesting facts uh, detailed by Alcina states that it was the abode of a Diwata and that Diwata was uh, called Makapatag uh, who was said to be son of Malaon. So if you look at the map, I've also indicated there the name Laon, Malaon, which uh, might refer to uh, the volcano also in Negros. So Malaon was a sort of fertility goddess that is documented in Luarca and other uh, early chronicles. So the other uh, fact noted by Alcina is that people had gone to uh, Humonhon for pilgrimage. So this is this was the practice they had. So for us today, we go to churches, we go to shrines, but at the time their shrine was this island. And I suggest that uh, another island that is part of the, uh, it, the route of the Magellan expedition, Limasawa might also have had a similar uh, 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 role as a sort of sacred island. So in this case, the key resource that it had for especially for the Magellan expedition was the spring or the springs that uh, were available in uh, Humonhon. So interestingly, uh, in Alcina's account, that spring also figures as a uh, very sacred uh, a source of water. So he would say uh, uh, people had to have proper rituals before uh, they got anything from the island, even the firewood. So the firewood, they said, was uh, in other chronicles. Yeah, these were uh, quite helpful. Uh, they could uh, continue burning uh, or giving, giving light even underwater. So the uh, things like firewood and uh, say ho what we might now call holy, holy water were procured from uh, this island. But uh, the other thing not mentioned by Alcina, and this is critical to the pre-colonial culture, is that uh, so he just mentions others or etc. Uh, apart from good health, so water and firewood, but I would suggest uh, uh, it was also a stopover for uh, the Mangayao raiders, especially in a place like the Visayas that was known for its warlike culture. So they were uh, they conducted raids in uh, Luzon, they conducted raids in uh, Mindanao, and it is believed they even went as far as China. And that was uh, recorded or mentioned in one of the uh, epics, so about a Bohol princess who uh, ordered a suitor to uh, si Datu Sumanga to uh, conduct a raid in China so that she could give Buyu uh, to start the courting process. So that princess was Bugbung Humasan. So that it's in William Henry Scott's uh, Barangay book, but it was all the, originally recorded by Father Alcina. So that's uh, one of the key sources we will uh, refer to later. So the other de description of Makapatag, apart from being the son of Malaon, uh, so he's considered as the greatest of the Diwatas, like Jupiter for the Romans. So this is quite important because uh, in uh, the Roman civilization, Jupiter was uh, their greatest god, and uh, that was derived from Zeus of the Greeks. And uh, both of them were somehow uh, linked to the sky. So they were sky gods. And in this case, I would suggest that uh, Makapatag was a sort of typhoon god. So something similar is suggested in uh, Chirinus Chronicle. So uh, this was from Father Gomez, one of the early, uh, I mean, <clears throat> missionaries in uh, what is now uh, Palapa or uh, Katubig, so Katubig in northern Samar. So the account states that uh, Kapatag comes down with others from heaven and resides in an island. 
I think near Dulag or Giwan in the open sea, which the Spaniards call uh, Isla Encantada. So that Isla Encantada is also noted by uh, Alcina to refer to Homonhon. So the other uh, fact that's shared between these two chronicles is that Homonhon was a sort of enchanted island and uh, that suggests that it was also a, a abode for the dead. So they also buried their uh, deceased relatives in such an island, which is a common practice across uh, this part of the Philippines. So you have islets, islands uh, of the main communities where uh, they would put the remains of their ancestors in uh, cave burials. So for the Magellan expedition, Monhon became uh, the watering place of good signs. And that was uh, because that was their lifesaver after they uh, ended their trans-Pacific uh, voyage. But the uh, Chronicle of Alcina again mentions that it was uh, owned by a certain Makapatag and it was a celebrated pilgrimage site for uh, people from the area. So not only perhaps from uh, the Samar Leyte area which uh, faced Tomonhon, but even people from uh, as far as uh, Bohol or further, further out. So this is what's not mentioned, the possible role as uh, a stopover for raiding fleets. So even those who were going to China, perhaps in the 12th century, as uh, hypothesized by the likes of Isorena, who wrote about the Visayan raiders on the uh, South China coast. And uh, here I link these narratives about the Diwata, uh, Makapatag, and uh, Malaon to that of uh, someone called Makaandog. So Makaandog was this uh, giant uh, figure of folklore uh, by the hard couple who I mentioned earlier. And notice the narratives they collected in uh, the 1950s actually, published article in 1966, uh, but it relates the movement of this giant family. So people might not necessarily gonna see them, but uh, they are, uh, uh, their presence is uh, evident in environmental phenomena like typhoons, like earthquakes, uh, even the features of the natural environment. So there would be an islet, you know, which is believed to have been where uh, Makaandog or some relative of his or his wife or a sibling had uh, conducted some activity, or in the case of Makaandog, he played a game or he had cast his net. So those are uh, linked. Uh, environmental features, uh, the physical geography are linked to uh, this family. And even ang linguistic ties, uh, for instance, between Samar and Leyte has been explained by the uh, respondents of the hard couple to be uh, due to uh, the islands being inhabited by this family. So they are now regarded as a uh, ancestor giants. So that's quite an interesting uh, notion that uh, they were descended from giants. And uh, according to these uh, respondents, evidence of that are the large bones which you see in these uh, cave burials in uh, some islet of the main coast. So that's uh, their belief that they were descended from these giants and uh, it's bad to disturb these uh, resting places. And I suggest that this was part of a larger a family tree of beings uh, or uh, supernatural figures in pre-colonial times. Okay, as mentioned earlier, uh, Makapatag who was associated with Humonhon was said to be, according to the early Jesuits, son of Malaon, who, which, who was based uh, the woman, diwata, female diwata based in uh, 
Negros Island, who is uh, by the description would appear to be a fertility goddess. So uh, this is a common uh, uh, characteristic of fertility goddesses in many parts of the world. Yeah, they are associated with uh, volcanoes and even in other parts of the Philippines, uh, perhaps. But it's not only heart, the heart couple who had similar descriptions of giant movements, even in Alcina's time, you also uh, see this. So Alcina would report that uh, there was you know, an unnamed giant, so be because he had forgotten the name, uh, he always heard it from the uh, narratives, the songs and the epics of these parishioners, newly Christianized Visayans, but uh, he didn't provide a name because he had forgotten. So he just said that his, this giant crossed on foot from the island of Limasawa to that of Panaon, so a bigger island just across Limasawa, and from Panaon to the coast of Caraga. So he described how this giant would wade through the water and cross over to northeastern uh, Mindanao. So again, similar to the descriptions of the heart couple that these giants moved around. So I suggested earlier that uh, environmental phenomena are associated with uh, deities. So in our case, call them diwata, so uh, derived from Sanskrit. Uh, but a specific diwata we are looking at, uh, in this case, Makapatag might have been a typhoon god, although Makaandog, the giant I mentioned earlier, uh, is also associated with other phenomenon like earthquakes. But uh, if you look at the names, some are familiar. So even Yahweh of the uh, in the Old Testament or uh, of ancient Israel, he was said to be a storm and warrior deity. So this is from uh, online. That's the term, storm and warrior deity. And here I would suggest that it was similar uh, in the Visayas with Makapatag. Okay, if you look at this uh, world map, uh, notice how the Philippines is, uh, in terms of the color of uh, storms, or here we call it typhoon, Other in other areas, it's cyclones or it's, uh, so there are several terms that we have for such phenomena, but in terms of uh, strength or their categories, so some, a lot of the strongest are uh, found in or occur in the Western Pacific. So the, uh, there was this article, yeah, hurricanes you know, in the US, we might, they might think you know, it's strong. So just look at the Western Pacific where you see the strongest of these phenomenon. So in this case, the Philippines has been battered by uh, these very strong and uh, periodic typhoons. In our case, the recent one is Typhoon Yolanda. But as you perhaps learned from at uh, that time, uh, it was Yolanda was not the first. There were several others. So there was one in 1897, another in 1912. And going further, there might have been other stronger ones that we do not yet know about. And here I suggest that this frequency explains why there was this belief that Homonhon was the abode of Makapatag because uh, if you look at typhoon tracks, these three typhoons passed over or close to uh, Homonhon and uh, these wind patterns also brought in Magellan. So that would uh, make this coincidence possible that uh, Magellan would arrive in the area where some of the strongest typhoons uh, would also pass through. And therefore, the meeting or the landing of uh, the Magellan expedition in a sacred island associated to a war god uh, would be possible. So other familiar names, Poseidon, Greek god of the sea, storms, earthquakes, and forces. So a bit like how uh, Makaandog the giant is uh, regarded, although they are no longer referred to as the Watas but as ancestor giants. So I suggest that these uh, uh, diwatas, okay, they might have had origins in mga warrior heroes. So they're always described as these fierce warriors, uh, although very big, and uh, but they might have had roots in 
uh, ordinary mortals who across time became larger than life. So uh, this is how they rememorialize their ancestors through these songs. And over time, there might have been accumulations and later they would become associated with the uh, natural hazards that was frequent in the area. So this is suggested in some of the chronicles. Uh, basically, according to Chirino, their idolatry uh, is, or basically their religion is in a word, as with many other nations, an adoration and deification of their ancestors, especially if those who distinguish themselves through valiant deeds or cruelties, obscene or lewd acts. So they beg favors from the dead, uh, either recently deceased or those who have been dead for a long time. And I suggest uh, these are not the Diwatas. So the recent ancestors, they called Umalagad. So someone who follows them, uh, Agad or Alagad in uh, Tagalog. But uh, Father Kobach notes that even uh, when Samar, for instance, had been Christianized for several centuries already, so this was in 1968. So Father Kobach, by the way, is a Franciscan missionary who translated the Alcina manuscripts. So you can find that in uh, UST, the, the publication, and also in Filipiniana Sacra. But uh, he did uh, excavations. So even though he did not have formal training in the 60s, uh, but he went to this burial site in uh, of General MacArthur in Eastern Samar called Minalo Minalungon. So Lungon means coffin. So this is found in Carl Bordeaux's recently published uh, biography of Father Kobach. So according to one fisherman who they met uh, on that excavation trip, so he did not like the idea that ma disturb ang cave because uh, it may cause a strong typhoon. So see the correlation between uh, burials of uh, prehistoric humans and also of uh, natural phenomena like typhoons. Okay? The logic would be if you disturb them, they would send this typhoon to punish you. So that's uh, in the Eastern Samar area. Uh, the other key giant in this narrative, because it will explain why in Limasawa there was this account of a giant crossing over to Panaon and then to uh, Karaga. Okay? If you look at this area, it's a fault line. So the Leyte Central Fault happens there. And if uh, you notice on the side, I put here something from the historic or uh, different names from the historical data papers. So one of these actually is from my grandfather who was a school teacher in Haru Leyte. So the number two uh, uh, detail, uh, he was able to gather from the old folks. Uh, earthquakes were caused by a certain Eno or, or Enoch, a giant who, when he rolled over or moved about, caused the earthquake. So it was only recently when I was actually preparing for this presentation that I found the reference in the Chronicles. Uh, uh, very similar, Eno, Enoch, Enoch in the uh, historical data papers and in uh, Scott's Barangay, uh, referring to a datu. So I mentioned earlier about the deification of warrior ancestors. So Enoch was reputed to have captured 2,000 slaves and was feared and respected by Datus up and down the coast. So uh, before and after submission to colonial authority. So apparently this was the early Spanish period, but you have this raider called Enoch who happened to be named after a natural phenomena and that, or natural hazard. And that was the earthquake. So Linoch, Linog, Linog in Bisaya is Lindol in Tagalog. So there was a Diwata named after the earthquake, in this case, Linog. But somehow in the Chronicles, it's referred to as Linog because probably of uh, Spanish phonetics or they could not hear properly the, or say the G word. And this is uh, my argument that Makanduk, as noted in Luarca's account of the three war gods, might have also been Makaandog or Makandog, the uh, ancestor giant in uh, 20th century Eastern Samar. So what's possibly also the war god referred to in Luarca's account, which he does not name as to its uh, locality where that god was uh, based. But uh, Makandog was said to be a war god, although Alcina does not mention 
uh, makapatag as a war god. So if you notice earlier, these names, now, there are variations, but uh, there are also similarities. So we could argue that these were variations because of uh, differences in uh, the traditions of local communities. But because of these hazards being frequent in the area, so they were bound to refer to the same thing. So Makaptan in the Western Visayas might be Makapatag in Eastern Visayas uh, because they also are passed through by these very strong uh, typhoons. So I suggest here that uh, Limasawa might also have been a uh, sacred island or at least the northern part where uh, it's called Tawid. So Tawid is a sort of a journey across uh, open sea in order to go to an island to get water. And I mentioned earlier how, how Humonhon was a sacred island where you could get holy water. And apparently something similar might have uh, been the case with Limasawa because you find these uh, sherds. So this is uh, available in uh, one of the government buildings in the island that we when we visited there some time back. And it would suggest that yeah, there were rituals being conducted in the plateau area where you find these springs. So now uh, still called Tawid by some of the locals, although now has a different formal name. So as I suggested, Makandug might have been equates the same as Makaandug or uh, also Makapat. Because Andug, Andug basically means to strike fear. So when someone is raiding your community, you feel afraid. And uh, again, there might be some uh, linguistic element as to why uh, they're dif rendered differently, but uh, have a similar uh, meaning. And uh, what's pointed to is that these giants were uh, quite scary. So they scared people. And that was the value that was uh, highly prized by the Visayans at the time. They viewed themselves as uh, fierce warriors, uh, Isug or Kilabot in Tagalog. And uh, this is what they wanted to uh, do when attacking, that they need not fight. as They just scared these people to submission with as uh, less bloodshed as possible. And uh, Isug was the core value that they uh, they preserved in these uh, legends or in these in their religious uh, beliefs. So these are some examples that would highlight this isog value for the locals. And it was not only individual isog, but it was also uh, clan-based. So kaotoran or uh, kaanakan or in Tagalog kamag-anak. So that refers to the umbilical cord, utod, tukat. So kapatid, uh, bugto, so they are synonymous. But uh, somehow, ferocity was also associated with these uh, communities, which uh, in the Visayas was called Gamoro, but uh, Balangay perhaps in uh, the Tagalog areas. Although again, there's some, uh, I don't know, there needs, uh, there are studies that uh, have, uh, complicated this picture of uh, the barangay. So there are variations across different parts of the Philippines. And in this case, uh, if you look at the uh, the spins, this is referred to in Sanchez's uh, early 1600s dictionary. Uh, they are they refer to Baklayon, Dawi, Secure, Panaon as uh, areas with a fierce nga villagers or uh, related people and in this uh, area you will notice it's quite close to Humonhon so I would argue uh, Humonhon might have been a pilgrimage site for these fierce or Isug communities uh, in parts of the Visayas which according to Alsina were regarded as the bravest or more courageous so especially people from uh, uh, Panglao. So that was uh, where the paramount chief at the time, Waray Tupong, was based, but they were dispersed later by the Paternati Portuguese uh, raid. So in uh, the case of Humonhon, uh, that was 
where they might have conducted what's referred to by Alsina as uh, pagdaga and pagdasig rituals, so conducted before and after the raid. So first to chant out that they may conquer, and then uh, when they returned to chant the victory. So they were memorializing the uh, victory over their enemies, uh, perhaps through song or through ritual. And the babaylan, the either effeminate males or old women were the facilitators of this uh, ritual. And as mentioned by Alcina, even though he does not mention uh, warfare, uh, he did not really uh, get an idea as, as to what was conducted in these uh, reading rituals. Because again, by that time, this practice had been discouraged or almost dying out. So these Karakoas, you can imagine, might have frequented this island. So in uh, referring to Makapatag, this is the probable nga etymology that it referred to the typhoon because this uh, patag flatten is exactly what typhoons do. Makaubos or uh, it terminates everything in its path is also evidenced in this description by uh, Father Alsina. So very poetic description of a typhoon and not every, even this simple worm is also flattened by this uh, phenomena. And that might explain this uh, relatively egalitarian character of communities in the Visayas. Uh, uh, each Gamoro was a sort of nation to itself. It did not want to be uh, subjugated by neighboring communities. So they were kin related except for uh, captives, which they uh, captured from non kin groups. So this was also a description in uh, the aftermath of Yolanda. So similar to uh, Alcina's characterization of uh, Makapatag as the great equalizer or the uh, supreme leveler in the words of Father Kobak. So I suggest here that the uh, events of uh, the arrival of the Magellan fleet might have uh, put an end or spelled the end of this way of life. Okay, they alienated this Diwata Sim Makapatag and his mother Malaod. So that's the perhaps the significance of the Magellan expedition that upon their arrival, they had chanced upon a very symbolic uh, island, uh, which was the abode of Makapatag, who eventually punished them for uh, entertaining the uh, Spaniards and accepting their teachings as. Uh, newly baptized uh, Christians. So here I show the uh, link between this folklore about giants and the Watas and also or an old religion and the areas passed through by the uh, Magellan expedition. So Alcina did not believe that Al uh, the Magellan expedition arrived in Humonhon, but here it suggested that uh, this uh, rock or rocks where uh, graffiti in Portuguese apparently are found. So that would indicate that uh, Magellan and his crew were indeed in the uh, island. So what exactly were the views of uh, the Visayans of the arrival of Magellan? So Luarca in 1582 noted a uh, story from the Tingyanes, apparently the uplanders of Panay, Panay, although now it's the name of a uh, Philippine indigenous group. So those who fled out to sea through the open door are the Spaniards uh, and that they had no news of us until they beheld us, the Spaniards, return through the sea. So this was some decades after the Magellan expedition, but uh, somehow if you link it or uh, put it together with Alcina's account, uh, he also found a tradition in the 1660s or earlier that the Spanish ships arrived to this island in the beginnings. So there's an indication that uh, the arrival of Magellan had somehow been seen as uh, a development in their uh, origin story. Uh, there were long lost siblings. So those who had fled out to sea when the uh, early humans were dispersed. So ang account an is that the first man and woman, uh, because they found it too difficult to take care of many children. So they drove them away. The father 
as the first man pretended to be angry. And uh, it also explains the uh, social classes. So those who hid in the uh, bedroom of the parents became the datu. Those who went out to the living area became the timawa. Those who hid in the kitchen became the slaves, uripon. And uh, those who hid among pots and the cooking items became the uh, negritos. So that was their way of uh, explaining human uh, origins. So here in Luarca, you see that the Spaniards had become part of that. And later, as Sukano would uh, record, the Americans would also be uh, added on to this uh, origin narrative of theirs. So I would suggest that uh, these, are, these two are linked an account of the arrival of Spanish ships in Humonhon and also uh, the return narrative recorded by Luarca in Patay, which shared a similar religion. Kediba Malaon uh, is uh, regarded as the mother of Matapatag who was based in Humonhon. So they had this similar religious narrative, mother and son Diwatas. So it would uh, suggest that uh, there was a religious significance to the arrival of uh, Magellan. So why that is might have something to do with how the uh, Suluanons, the people who first met the expedition, had uh, perceived their arrival. So notice that there was no hostility. So Magellan even offered them uh, gifts when they first met. And uh, the chief who met them were quite joyous ang, yang, ang description of uh, Pigafetta. So there's an indication that uh, there might have been this view. Uh, these were somehow pilgrims. Uh, why would they not attack us? Why would go, they go directly to this Humonhon, which is a sacred island, and drink from its spring, which is holy water? So who are these people? So again, ang Luarca's account would suggest that even as early as uh, that first encounter, they might have been seen as these long lost uh, uh, relatives of theirs. So descendants of those who had escaped from the sea when the primordial father had uh, dispersed their children. So there's an indication that Magellan had been seen as a long lost relative and uh, along with their crew members. And remember, uh, they had this uh, translator, Enrique de Malaca, who could communicate with the locals, or at least they were understood. So they might have uh, perceived this as something strange. Uh, they were arriving from this weird direction, coming directly from the Pacific, rather than from the south or from the north. So that should be taken into account why uh, they would be welcoming of these visitors who they found completely unexpected and arriving from uh, somewhere they did not think of. Okay? Remember, these people were always on the lookout for raids, for attacks. And uh, these ships that were arriving were always assessed. Are they friendly? Are they not? And the fact that uh, it did not attack their community in Suluan, it went directly to Monhon, might have been given religious significance. And I highlight here ang notions nila of kinship at that time. Uh, uh, these were uh, an account of Alsina about slaves in uh, Samar, in Ibabaw, or in Borongan that recognized each other as kin. So recall here ang account about gift exchange. Si Magellan gave gifts. Uh, the chief in Suluan who met them also reciprocated. So this... Uh, parallels this practice of recognizing each other as relatives by giving each other presents, as noted by Father Alcina. But on the other hand, if you were nankin, there were also uh, different attitudes, So, such as in Chirino's account. If you were uh, not related to uh, this community and someone in the community died, you were fair game to be killed summarily so because they wanted to get souls or uh, conduct this mortuary right wherein they uh, killed indiscriminate, in, indiscriminately outside the immediate community outside the Gamoro. So again this is uh, 
an indication nga in the case of the Magellan expedition it might have been given some sort of religious significance uh, the fact nga uh, they did not attack these uh, new arrivals and even at the time intermarriage between communities was based on uh, or alliances between communities uh, were based on intermarriage so uh, if you were not part of this confederation, you were considered an outsider. So this return narrative, or at least the view uh, the Magellan fleet were uh, mga siblings or descendants of uh, originary ancestors kay might be the reason why people in the area were uh, hospitable, including to the Villalobos expedition who gave these islands, uh, Abuyo, which is Leyte, Tandaya, and uh, Samar, Masawa, Limasawa as uh, Las Filipinas. So that's where the Philippines got its name originally in reference to Leyte, Samar, and Limasawa because of their uh, hospitality towards uh, these arrivals coming from the Pacific. But uh, by the time of the Ligaspi expedition, because of the Ternate raid, I mentioned at the start, okay, it would change. So they would be afraid of these people, thinking they would attack them. So here I uh, also suggest that, as mentioned earlier, na alienate ang mga diwata, including Malaon and Makapatag. And so uh, the natives had to adjust they were no longer referred to as diwatas because they would be uh, demonized by uh, the missionaries. So don't worship the diwata. You should now uh, worship the saints, ask help from God, and so on. And so instead of being diwatas, they became the answers of giants that uh, we I discussed earlier. So there might have been some testing first of whether these people were really our long lost siblings or relatives of uh, common ancestors. Okay. In Katubig, for instance, in 1597, the people were surprised that the first missionary to go there could speak their language. So again, there might have been some sort of uh, language-based kinship recognition of these new arrivals. So this was the first contact in uh, what's now Northern Samar between the Spaniards and the uh, natives. And somehow these new arrivals could already speak their language. So that perhaps might have confirmed this uh, return to Yuring. And Nibalik, these were people who had gone away and come back. But there were also others who uh, might not have believed this. So Paranea, this was fake news. Uh, these Spaniards were our long lost siblings. Okay. According to an old Visayan, he did not believe in the heaven story of the uh, missionaries of people like Father Alcina, because you, the, we were created different from you, Kuno, and uh, you Spaniards don't even allow us to sit down in your house. How much more there in uh, heaven where you're saying all is uh, great, grandeur, majesty, and glory without end? So we see here perhaps a dilemma. Uh, are these really our siblings or not? Or are these just people who are pretending to be our relatives but who are actually uh, here for different purposes? So again, there's a emergence of a new narrative. No longer the Spaniards are returning siblings, but uh, a return to their old traditions. So a lot of people were regretting that they had accepted Spanish rule because they could not even protect us from the Moro raids. So these were their former victims, but because they'd been disarmed, they'd been Christianized, not allowed to kill. So they, they were now uh, suffering from uh, converting to Christianity. And this is this was expressed to uh, a, an early missionary uh, by the Visayans to uh, Aganduru Moris, Father Aganduru Moris. But in our present time, there are still memories of these giants or these diwatas. So they've been preserved through oral traditions as was seen in Yolanda. So I started out with Yolanda. I want to end with Yolanda because Suluan was also one of the first islands, or if not the first island hit by the typhoon in uh, the Philippines in 2003. So what 
helped them rise up was again the narrative of Makaandog, their ancestor giant who was brave, who was fierce. So that, that value also informed their uh, pagbangon or uh, re their resilience. So in conclusion, uh, Humunhon and possibly Limasawa were uh, abodes of nature gods. In the case of Humunhon, uh, Makapatag, and possibly in Limasawa, although it's not stated, yeah, might have been the earthquake god, uh, Linuk or Linug. Uh, so these had ritual significance to the Visayans. In the case of Pumunhon, we are sure that they got there to get water or holy firewood, but also possibly to get courage for their expeditions or uh, slave raidings and war uh, expeditions. So ang uh, Panay return through the sea narrative might have been linked to the uh, well-established tradition noted by Father Alcina in uh, 1668. And uh, again, the uh, suggestion is that Magellan and his uh, expedition members were seen as long lost descendants of uh, common ancestors. So Lina, Linahi Umano in the words of Chirino uh, in reference to their uh, oral tradition. So they had this uh, stories about where they came from, who their ancestors are, and the Spaniards became part of that because of that landing in Komonhon. So as early as 1521, um, uh, this return narrative, although it was later recorded in 1584. So early Spanish period disasters, epidemics. So this was seen as punishment by Makapatag who did not like this idea. Uh, these people were uh, accepting this new religion, welcoming these strangers, but they had to adapt the locals. So in, in order to preserve Isog, in order to preserve values of bravery and community. So instead of referring to these as Diwata, they became the ancestor giants that we know them uh, today. So I'd like to end with this uh, post from FB, which actually uh, encapsulates uh, the uh, arguments or points made in this uh, talk. So I'll just read here the uh, English translation of a poem in Warai by uh, Elmer Garado, who I believe is from uh, Giwan, and this is from a website or Facebook page from people by Suluan. So basically, the descendants of the uh, people who first met the uh, Magellan fleet, and again, probably related um, uh, to the women featured in that article from 2013 or the aftermath of Yolanda, who uh, used the story of Makandog in order to draw strength and uh, community and rise up from that disaster. So Makandog is a giant who is a very strong and who also does not lack in ferocity. So Isu, that is why in invading Samar, uh, no colonizer, no one could sustain ang mga colonizers. So may sakay sa'yo. They feared Makandog's ferocity that boiled over. These feats uh, by Makandog will forever take root in our memory, just like the imprint there in Binundukan. Because in the island, there's this imprint that they believe to be uh, the footstep of Makaandog. So just like the imprint never to be erased, uh, never to be toppled. So the values represented by uh, Makaandog or Makapatag remained in their narratives and that gave them strength in the face of new challenges of the uh, present. So this is the image from that same Facebook post with that very big footstep of Makaandog reminding them of their ancestor and the values they cherished uh, in the face of a frequently hazardous environment and other challenges uh, that their community continues to face. So I end, end uh, my presentation here. Damo nga salamat. Yan mo pa nga aga ay yung atanan. Thank you so much po, uh, Sir George Borinaga. If ever you have questions po, especially po dun sa nasa Zoom po natin, you can ask questions via uh, the Q&A portion of this Zoom, meet, uh, Zoom webinar. And for those naman po na nasa, um, na nasa live stream natin sa Facebook, pwede po kayong mag-ask ng question via the comment section of our live streaming. Ayan. Um, for the meantime, batiin lang po natin yung ilan po mga participants na nasa loob. We have 13 attendees po sa loob ng ating Zoom. Ayan. 
Um, binabati po namin lahat po ng participants na nasa loob ng ating Zoom meeting si na Mr. Alfred Alfred Yalo, Bernie Eroles, Bem Rivero, Deborah Ray, um, Gel Bolingo, Francis Carmel Duero, Mary Rose Cabasal, Medardo Ratunil, Belen, Miss Belen, Nick Pichay, Ronwen Jason, Teresa May, and Teresa May Galliardo, and to all the rest po na nakikinig po sa ating ngayong uh, tanghali. Uh, do you have any questions po regarding po? Ayan, may nag-chat po. Thank you very much daw po, Dr. George, for a very comprehensive and um, informative lecture today. Ayan. Um, may mga nagpapabati din po. Watching from Mari, from um, Lugait, Misamis Oriental, Marining. Ayan. Watching from Lawag City, Liw, Liw, Liwa, Gabriel Yago. Watching from Quezon City, meron din po Maria Agnes Zugo Marcelo. Meron din po tayo from Chicago, Illinois. Edward Brotonel. Meron din po from Mexico, Luis Gomez. Yan, and from Tacloban, support from from the hometown, Antonio Cinco and Melchor Paete. So meron po ba tayong mga questions regarding po sa lecture today? Yan, thank you very much daw po, um, Sir George. Very informative daw po from Bem Rivero. Thank you po. Sige. Ayan po. Okay, we'll check po kung may questions tayo sa ating Facebook page. And so far, sir, wala pong questions. Um, very interesting po yung lecture po natin today. Ngayon ko lang nalaman na ang humonhon po pala ay sacred place sacred during that time. Kaya most likely hindi rin talaga sinalakay ni Namajelan. Eh, Namajel, ng mga ancestors natin, si Namajelan that time. At ito pala ay tirahan ng isa sa mga tinatawag na greatest diwata ng Bisaya that time, si mga patag. At ito rin po pala ang tinuturong rason kung bakit um, madalas daanan ang ang parting late ng mga typhoons. Okay. Tapos uh, si Namajelan din po pala ay tiningnan as uh, branch ng na relative, ibang branch na relatives natin. Yung mga nagpadagat na... Parang mga long lost brothers. Dahil yung isang belief yun na may nag umescape daw by the sea. Yung iba, nagtago lang sa iba-ibang parts ng bahay. Pero yung iba, yung mga ibang lahi, yung mga pumunta daw yun ng dagat. Kaya nawala, tapos bumalik. Ngayon lang nabalitaan ulit. Kaya Ayan. Ayun. May nagtatanong po dito kung ano daw po yung best way para ma-reach si Dr. George. Yung Facebook email page. or Facebook. Email. Email. Sige, ano ano nga pong email add ni mo Sir George? Yung pdgborinaga@gmail.com. Uh, gborinaga@gmail.com. George Emmanuel Borinaga po sa Facebook. Our George Emmanuel Borinaga po sa Facebook. So if you have questions po, pwede po kayong magtanong kay Sir George. Ayan. Sige, so far walang questions. Jubes, ikaw ba? May question ka? Actually, uh, wala naman. Actually, napaka-refreshing talaga nung topic ngayon. Kasi ngayon ko lang nalaman na may ganoong uh, majestic ba, matatawag, na side yung Uh, nangyari 500 years ago sa Homonhon Island. So, pwede din pala tayo, pwede din natin tingnan yung ating pre-colonial past sa ibang paraan, no, na balikan natin yung mga naunang tala tungkol sa pakikipag-ugnayan ng ating mga ninong sa, sa mga Espanyol na nagamit ang uh, folklore, uh, ano ba tawag doon, uh, framework So, para magkaroon naman tayo ng ibang uh, perspective ng pag-aaral sa pre-colonial past natin. Kasi normally nakikita natin yung mga ano eh, European sources. Oo, oh, eh. true. Kaya bago itong na, na, napanood o natutunan natin ngayong araw. So, mukhang walang questions. Jules, meron ba tayong mga ilang paalala advertisements para sa ating mga uh, viewers ngayong araw? 
Yes, actually, nag-prepare ako ng short uh, PowerPoint slide para habang sasalita ako makita, ma-visualize nila yung ating mga incoming or upcoming events. So, let me share screen. Yan, share. Kita na ba sa screen? Yes, pero ano lang siya, i-presenters view. Yan. So before we end this live stream, ilan lamang po itong makikita, uh, makikita nyo sa screen na major events sa NQC na dapat nating abangan or antabayanan. Uh, starting uh, two weeks, uh, next week na pala, no? um, magsisimula na ang 500th anniversary of the Philippine Park in the first year of navigation of the world and unveiling of the Samar, Humanhon, and Suluan kung centennial markers na magaganap uh, starting March 16 sa G1 Eastern Summer. So abangan po natin uh, sa via Facebook page po na NQC ang live streaming ng mga events na ito. Yan. Then, isa rin po sa mahalagang uh, event po ng NQC ay uh, at ng NHEP ay ang declaration ng Basilico uh, Menore of the Santo Niño de Cebu and image of Santo Niño de Cebu as National Cultural Treasure bilang bahagi ng uh, 500th Anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines sa April uh, 14, 2021. Abangan po natin yan. And of course, ang inaabangan nating lahat ng sambayan ng Pilipino, ang April 27 or D-Day na Quincentinian Commemorations, ang 500th anniversary of the victory at makta na gaganapin sa Lapu-Lapu City and at the same time, meron din pong mga nakalatag na pagraba dito sa Maynila. So, uh, ito nga po ang opening ng Metro uh, ng Manila Metropolitan Theater, kung saan gaganapin ang event grill show ng Quincentine Commemoration sa Philippines dito sa Maynila, na pangungunahan naman po ng uh, NCCA or National Commission for Culture and the Arts, National Historical Commission of the Philippines, and NQC or National Quincentine Committee. And again, um, alam ko po na may mga kas uh, audience po tayo or mga kapatid na hindi po naabutan o napanood ang lektura para sa umagang ito, Wag po kayo magalala dahil maaari nyo pa rin pong ma-access ang um, lecture. Ang kailangan nyo lang pong gawin ay mag-register sa portal.npc.gov para uh, uh, maka-generate po kayo ng e-certificate doon. Again, login lang po tayo or mag-register po sa portal.npc.gov.ph. Ayan po, uh, sa lahat po ng nanonood ngayon, inaanyayahan po namin kayo na uh, makilahok po sa Pag-banit ko yung City of Commemoration City of Philippines. So pag pumunta po tayo sa Join Us part po ng NQC uh, website, ay may makikita po kayo mga downloadable files po na paari nyo pong gamitin. Halimbawa sa Facebook cover, gusto nyo pong makita sa account nyo na uh, katuwang po kayo ng NQC sa pag-celebrate uh, pag ng uh, 500 years ng uh, victory sa Mactan. Yan. And again, please don't forget uh, to like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash NQC2021 at i-follow kami sa Twitter and Instagram at NQC2021 at huwag po natin kalimutang mag-subscribe sa YouTube channel ng NQC para sa iba, iba pang uh, resources. So ito po, pakinggan po natin ang playlist ng NQC or 2021 Quincentennial Commemorations in the Philippines na pinamagatang 500 Years Philippines na accessible po sa Spotify. And upang uh, lagi po tayo maging updated sa nakaline up pa na programs ng NQC uh, for the 2021 Queens, uh, QCP, ang tabayanan lang po natin ng Facebook page at ang website po ng National Queens and Union Commemorations uh, Committee. Again, maraming maraming salamat po sa pagsubaybay at pakikinig sa aming countdown to 500 online lecture. Sa so, susunod po ulit, mabuhay po tayong lahat. Kita kids. Thank you po. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Dr. Mandirigmang Pilipino settlement
So may nag-comment nga yung isang taga Leyte na may tales daw na may mga footprints daw doon sa may tawid plateau na so baka related doon sa uh, folklore na may tumatawid at least from the northern part to Panaon and then finally to uh, 